So congruent figures is our topic today. Um, anybody want to guess what we mean by congruent figures, first of all? Uh, well, to, Tony, what do you think, sir? That's right. So let me first define this here. When we talk about congruent figures, we've talked about congruent angles and uh, congruent segments, haven't we? So we're going to talk about congruent figures. We're going to start with triangles and then some polygons after. Uh, so whenever, write this down, whenever two figures have the same size and shape, so both of these have to be true. They have to have the same size and shape. They are called congruent. Okay, so write that down. Oh, wait. So you guys remember congruent segments. These are the segments that have same size and shape. Actually, do we even need to talk about shape? I mean, sh shapes of a segment. All segments are the same shape. So that's why we only say what? Segments that have the same? Measure. Equal length, right? Have an equal length. And angles also. Do we need to talk about same shape for angles? No. No, right? Oh, sorry. So angles, you know, you just have to the same uh, equal measures, right? So similar to that. But for shapes, though, not only do you have to have this congruent angles and so forth, because they have to look to uh, the size and shape. Also, the shape has to be uh, exactly like. So, for example, we're going to start with the triangle. Take a look at these two triangles. If I told you that these two triangles are congruent, what can you tell me about the measure of angle A? Measure of angle A is, a is going to be congruent to anybody's? Yes. Angle D. What about measure angle B? If I told you these two triangles were congruent, Jonathan? E, B and E will be congruent. And C and class? Yeah. Is that easy? They even give you to you in different colors so you could tell. Okay, so uh, as you can see, these are called corresponding vertices, right? A and D, B and E and C and F, right? Can somebody read this for us? Triangle A, B, C are congruent, that part? Go ahead, sir. Triangle A, B, C, and D, E, F are congruent. If you mentally slide A, B, C to the right, you can fit it exactly over triangle D, E, F by matching up the vertices. Yeah, A with D, B with E, and C with F. Does that make sense? So you can imagine mentally sliding this to the right, right? It'll match exactly. Do you see what I mean? Okay, so it turns out if you have uh, congruent triangles, of course, you're going to have corresponding angles. We just talked about it, right? Corresponding angle is the same as corresponding vertices. The, but measurement of these angles will be congruent, right? What about corresponding size? Let's look at the picture again. Uh, if I ask you which side is corresponding side to side AB, Okay, so the corresponding angles are pretty straightforward. Anybody see what you could do? Yes, sir. DE. -E. How many people agree with DE? -E? Raise your hand. What about ED? Could we say ED? Uh, Why not? Aren't they the same sort of? Didn't we do that before where segments and lines, we named them, you know, AB is same as BA and so forth. How come? Yeah, you're exactly right. You don't want to do uh, uh, DE. -E. You want to say? No, wait, you want to you know, you say DE. -E. You don't want to say? ED. Why not? Grace? Yeah, those are, so yeah, yeah, for corresponding figures, if you're going to say AB, the A has to, you know, if I'm going with A and B, you have to start with the corresponding uh, vertices. Does that make sense? So if I say AB, you got to go D, not the other way around. You guys get the picture? What about BC then? Could we say FE? No. no, you should say yeah. yeah. What about for uh, side AC, we should say DF, DF, not the other way around. Does that make sense? As a matter of fact, if you do it the other way around, it's going to be wrong. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So that's how you do that. Okay. Can somebody read this for us? Yes, sir. And this is what we just talked about, isn't that right? We had those corresponding angles and corresponding sides. Those are all congruent. You could you know, see that they're going to be true. Uh, so this is how we define then congruent triangles. So if two triangles are congruent, this is the definition. Write this down. If two triangles are congruent, I mean, sorry, two triangles are congruent if and only if. When do we use if and only if? This is called biconditional, so we use it for definitions. You guys remember that? Very good. So. This is a definition. When we say two triangles are congruent, this is what we mean. Two triangles are congruent if and only if their vertices can be matched up so that corresponding parts, angles and size, of the triangles are congruent. 
Does that make sense? Okay, so write that down. No? Okay, go ahead. But let me ask you this. Uh, how many uh, parts are there in this congruent triangle? Three. Three, right? So when we say corresponding parts, there are three parts. Really? Three? That's all? Six. How many people think there are only three corresponding parts that are congruent? If the two triangles are congruent? I must say six. There are six. Very good. There are six pairs, right? Which are what? All the three? Yes. Yeah, you have three angles that's going to corresponding, right? Corresponding angles, and then you have three pairs of corresponding sides. So there are six parts. So when we say corresponding parts, please remember that angles and sides, we mean those six parts, right? Uh, three pairs of angles and three pairs of sides of a triangle. Does that make sense? All right. So let's move on. Anybody need more time? We good? Okay. So take a look at this picture. Uh, in this triangle, let's look at the uh, angle R. You see the marks up here on angle R? Yeah. Which angle do you think is going to be corresponding angle to that angle R? Yes. Angle S. Angle S. Would you agree? Because they have the same marking over there. What about U? I mean A. A is going to be corresponding with yeah. U. U. Dylan, what about Y? N, correct? Okay, so this time, could you slide it over mentally and then match the corresponding verses? Oh. No, sometimes you have to not to slide, but what do you, have to, what do you think you have to do? Yeah, this time you gotta flip it. So don't be alarmed if you have to do that, right? Sometimes you have to uh, rotate them. Sometimes you have to flip and rotate, you know, it depends, okay? So notice that these two triangles are congruent because, you know, you have all this marking. You see the RY is then congruent to the side R Y would have the same length as what? Anybody? S N. And you said it correctly. You shouldn't say N S, right? It should be S N. Does that make sense? What about uh, A Y? U N. Do you guys get the idea? So can somebody read this for us here? In the, I mean, the congruent parts of this. Okay. Who would like to read? Grace, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? That's what we just talked about. And if they do, who would like to read this part right here? Go ahead, sir. Sun, uh, not sun, triangle S U N. Go ahead. Triangle S U N fits over triangle R A Y. The corresponding part is congruent, and the triangles are congruent. We refer to congruent triangles we name the corresponding vertical of vertices in the same order. For the triangle shown, the triangle S U N is congruent to triangle R A Y. Yeah, so you could use the symbol there, same thing. So do you see what they're saying? If I'm going to say triangle S-U-N, could I call it Y, tri is triangle S-U-N is congruent to triangle Y-A-R or something like that? No. Oh. They're in the same order, meaning the same order in which they, the corresponding uh, angles they match. Does that make sense? So if you're going to say triangle S-U-N, guess what? We have to call that triangle, the other one R-A-Y, R -A -Y, right? They have to match that way. Is that the only way to do that? No. What if I called it, who could tell me? If I said triangle UNS is congruent to then triangle what? What do I, have, what can I say? If I say UNS here. Uh, Nicole? AYR. How many of you agree with Nicole here? AYR. Is that right? Does that make sense? Okay, very good. So that's what they're trying to say here. Uh, there are other ways to doing it. If you, th if you said SNU, then it'll be triangle uh, RYA. Do you see that? And then if you say triangle NUS, it's got to be triangle YAR, right? You see how the, cor the vertices match up with the corresponding vertices? Okay, good. Okay, that's what you're going to be doing your homework tonight. Can you do something like this? This is pretty easy? Okay, good. Okay, so for example, if I said that triangle XYZ is congruent, triangle a is tri congruent to triangle ABC, there's a nice advantage of you know, doing it this way, where the corresponding vertices match. Does anybody see a nice, uh, the reason why we do it this way? What's, how, why is this nice? Why should you be, why should you want to do it this way? Why not just sort of put it in any order you want? What kind of 
information could you get out of just looking at this now symbol? Now that we understand, every time you have a congruent triangle, that you have to do it in, you know, so that the, you have to write it so that the corresponding vertices match like this, in this order. Yeah. Samantha. Exactly. You could just by looking at this statement, you could see which angles are the corresponding angles. For X, which is the corresponding angle with X? A. 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 For Y, B. Z. C. And not only that, you could actually look at the corresponding size as well. Look, Y, Z is going to be corresponding size to the AB. A, y, Z, uh, X, Z is going to be corresponding size to AC. Do you guys see how nice that is? This is why we want to do it this way. When two figures are congruent. Does that make sense? So that sometimes they don't even give you the figure. Right? But you could just by looking at this statement, you could see if they're congruent, you could see that these are the corresponding size and corresponding angle. So it's by looking at the Okay, so that's really nice. So this is what they're talking about here, okay? And so, uh, who would like to read when the definition of congruent triangle is used? Who would like to read that part? Go ahead, sir. When the definition of congruent triangle is used to justify either of these statements, uh -huh. the wording commonly used is corresponding parts of yeah, and many times people don't want to write the whole write the whole thing like this. You could abbreviate it this way using, right, some symbols this way. That's okay too. Is that okay? Yeah. Question. Oh yeah. Some of you see, some of you have learned something like the CPCTC for you know. No, you can't use that. Don't use that now because many times when I ask them what what it means, people don't even know what it means. They just go CPCTC, you know. So I'll tell you when you could use that later. Probably during second semester. But yeah. Because they write this and they don't know what it means, okay? So you have to know what it means, okay? So either write it this way, write it out, or you could use um, abbreviations like this, okay? Very good. All right. So do you think then uh, congruent polygons will be similar to congruent triangles in terms of naming these things and referring to corresponding vertices and so forth? Yeah. So write this down. Here's the definition. When two polygons, now instead of triangles, when two polygons are congruent. You will note that this is very similar. It says two polygons are two polygons are congruent if and only if their vertices can match up so that their corresponding parts are congruent. Does that sound familiar? Yes? Yeah, yeah. what's it sound like? Triangle. Yeah, instead of congruent triangles, it's you just replace triangle part with polygons, okay? So that's really really the same thing, okay? Write it down. So take a look at this picture. Um, do you see how they uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So they they like to use those. So do you see how B the uh, the angle B corresponds to angle C, C and then R corresponds to A. H A. You know. So do you see how they name when the, when the two polygons are congruent? Do you see how they uh, write it in a way that the cor the vertices match up? Okay. So is, is this the only way? No. You could start with R, right? And if uh, if I did R A K E B, what would you say? H O K E C. You see how they match up that way, yeah. So please do it that way. Now, can I can I call this B K A E R or something like that? No. no you either go clockwise or counterclockwise when you name. It. You don't want to go like zigzag. Okay, that'd be wrong. All right. Also, do you see something interesting about K E? Look at this side K E. Yes. Um, it's size. Yeah, it's a size for both. So anybody know what K is called? It's sort of simple, but, but yeah. Huh? What did you say? No, say it. I think you might be right. Congruence, uh, almost. They're, they're called common size. Okay. Hey, they're congruent, of course, right? Those are the congruent size, but uh, when you sh if they're sharing a side, and if two, uh, right? So it says uh, K is called a common side of the two pentagons because it shares that side. Okay. Any question? Does this make sense? Are we good? Okay. All right. Good then. That's it for today. Okay. Can you do something like this for your homework tonight? Yes. Yeah, that's the kind of question they're going to ask you, okay? All right, good.